Welcome to a lesson on triangle congruence. In this diagram here, we have two triangles with markings. I want you to notice that we have a lot of markings that show congruence. For example, angle R on the first triangle has one mark. Angle um, F on the second triangle has the same marking. If we were to uh, look at the other angles, angle S and angle E have the same markings. And even though these triangles aren't oriented the same way, we have angles T and D with the same markings. And so that lets us know that all of the angles are congruent. So we have three uh, congruent statements for angles. We can say that angle R is congruent to um, angle F. We can also state that angle S is congruent to angle E. And lastly, that angle T is congruent to angle D. That's the three angles. But for a triangle to be completely congruent, not only the three angles have to be congruent, we also have to have congruence on the three sides. Those are also marked. You can see that the um, sides are marked as well. So we have um, the, first the side with one marking, and you can either put TS or S. T. I'm going to go in alphabetical order. I'm going to call that segment length ST, or not length, I'm just going to call it segment ST is congruent to uh, this side with one marking. Again, um, let's Let's not focus only on alphabetical order, though. I want to back up just a second. You have to focus in the order itself of the way that we've named the segments. If I said on the first one ST, I want you to examine those angles in, in closely. S, two markings. T, the marking with the extra mark, whatever you want to call that. Uh, is that the same order? Uh, if I look at the second triangle, notice if S goes first, which one has that same marking? E does. So when I put my congruent statement, I have to put E first, and then ST would be like E and then D. So notice that even though I went alphabetical on the first one, because of the way congruent statements are made, I have to be careful. I don't always go in alphabetical order. I make the order match in the way that I'm naming them and the conventions there. Uh, another way to notice that, by the way, is that if I go S and then T in that order, um, look at how that would correspond to the angles at the left, S, T. And then it would go E, D, same order. So you can use that to quickly establish these statements. Um, the second side could be uh, R, S. And if you don't want to look at the triangle, all you have to do is look uh, at the statements to the left. R, S, right? It'd be F, E. And that would help you establish it. Okay, so that's going to be congruent to uh, segment F, E. And lastly, my marking uh, that, that has three marks, the side that has three marks, um, side length RT is going to be congruent to, or side uh, segment RT is going to be congruent to FD. All right, that is enough to say the triangles are congruent. So now I can state that. I can say, okay, angle, triangle RST, the triangle on the left, is congruent to the triangle on the right. Again, the order matters the way that we name those angles. RST, then I would say FED. I want those to correspond the way that I've written it down. Okay. You would not want to put RST is congruent to EDF. That would, even though those are talking about the same triangles, I want to name it so that the angles as I write them down are corresponding to each other. I'm hopeful that that makes sense there. The last thing I want to say is since all of the parts are congruent, right? The corresponding parts are congruent. The angles that correspond are congruent. The segments that correspond are congruent. We can say these triangles are then congruent because the corresponding parts are congruent. We have an abbreviation for that. We say CPCTC, which represents corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. It's a mouthful. That's pretty much how it works, though.